Lord, everyone. If you have your Bibles, go with me to Matthew chapter 6. Um, how many know today is a good day to be alive? Matthew chapter 6 is where we're going to launch from today. I need everybody's attention. I mean, we all have to be attentive to the things of the Lord today. Amen. It's good to see some family this morning. Alicia, good to see you. God bless you. First day of the fast this week. Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 16, hear the word of the Lord. Moreover, this is Jesus talking, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. Give me a little volume, please. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say unto you that they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Amen. Everybody say commissioned. So we're going to talk about today. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We honor you for the word of the Lord. We thank you for the things that you're doing in our lives. You've never left us nor forsaken us. Your word is true. We ask that you open the ears of our spirit that we may hear what the Spirit says to the church, and that we may honor your glory for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is a time that we have set apart and we have recognized as a time of prayer and fasting at the beginning of the year. Jesus, in the book of Matthew, chapter 3, going into chapter 4, when he began his ministry, he began in a spirit of fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. This is where we come along. This is a new year, and it's our responsibility to walk in the same anointing and in the same blessing as he does. Amen? There are some things in your life that you will never accomplish without fasting. There's some things that will not change. In one part of the scriptures, Jesus said to um, Peter, when Peter came to him, and he said, well, how come we could not cast out that demon? And he said to them, some things only go by prayer and fasting. Now, I don't know what demon it is that's troubling your life, taking your finances, exploding your relationships with people, bringing a melancholy spirit to you, bringing loneliness to you. I don't know what those spirits are that won't allow you to get ahead just when you begin to rise one step, you're falling back two steps. But there are some that will not leave you without prayer and fasting. Oftentimes, we have relationships that are not growing. Husbands and wives get to a particular place where they feel that we've, we've maximized ourselves. We're no good for each other anymore, and that's not true. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. But they can't come to realize where they are because 
some things must come by prayer and fasting. It's not going to happen any other way. There are things that you need in your life. They will not come except by prayer and fasting. Some of you have accepted that. Um, I'm, I'm, I've gone to the doctor, and the doctor has already told me that I have to live on this medication for the rest of my life. And you've chosen to agree with the natural, but you have yet to know the spiritual. We operate in a natural, and because we operate there, we oftentimes get to the end of the road, and we say we're done. And most of the time, it's because we've operated out of the flesh and not out of the spirit. Well, your spirit, man, does not lose life. In fact, your spirit, man, never grows old. Your flesh will. But when you get to glory, you're going to see some people, and you're going to say, oh, God, they are so young looking. They look so great. That's because they have a spirit man that matured but never gets old. Are y'all with me today? When we operate out of the flesh, we cannot come to understanding of where our spirit is. But if we operate out of the spirit, we can understand the kingdom of God and we can understand some other things. And we're always looking, most of us, to grow. And that growth means, yeah, God has this for me, he has that for me, I know it. And we lay down the plan of faith and we want to walk by that. I totally agree. But some things will not come to you but by prayer and fasting. There are some things that you want and you wonder Oftentimes, will God allow me to have that? It's good to have dreams. How many know it's good to have dreams? But there are a lot of dreams out there that have not been realized. And they haven't been realized for one reason. We did not enter into prayer and fasting. There are things in our lineages that will overthrow your lineage. Listen to me. You can't ever sit to say, it's about me. It's not about you. Because what you will do will validate the rest of your family. Whether they with you or not. Esau made a move and his children were cursed. And his families were cursed. Abraham made a move and his families were blessed. One of the grandsons moved outside of that. He left the curse upon the family. Are, are y'all there? Esau moved in the flesh while Jacob decided. He started in the flesh, but he came back and moved in the spirit. Is everybody with me? Some of us are not in position to accept what God has for us because we have not entered into this level that we've come to where we need to fast and pray. We've chosen to throw it away. So here's the bar that was set for us, but here's where we stand, and this is where we lie because... The cravings of our flesh are greater than what God wants to ordain in our spirit. You say, well, God, give it to me. Let me be the deciding factor. If he does, then he would not be a good dad. Because you might lose your kids behind all of that. Pride might raise up in you like Uzziah. And you would lose your life. Uzziah was a great king until pride got in him. And when pride got in him because he wanted so many things, much like Saul, 
he lost a lot, including his time here on earth. Amen. God wants you to accomplish everything that he has for you. Everything. But you're going to have to come into a place of balance where your spirit man overthrows your flesh. No matter who we are, you have to come to that place where your spirit man is in charge. If you are born again, then your spirit man is in charge. It is your spirit man that communes with God. It is your spirit man, those of you who have been with me over the last few months, your spirit man cannot make a mistake. It is the flesh that is weak. The spirit will only bring life. But you must be able to release the anointing of God through your spirit man. Amen? Here's what Paul said as he was speaking unto the Corinthians. He said out of 1 Corinthians 9, 27, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. There are some of you sitting here You've disqualified yourselves. I'm just being real. You can't even talk. Whether you were to be a dad or mom or whatever it was, you've disqualified yourself. So that anyone coming along can say, boy, look at the pot calling the kettle black. Y'all heard that saying? But you can redeem the time. No matter how much you've disqualified yourself, you can redeem the time, but it won't be without prayer and fasting. No matter who you are, you just don't get back in the run and think that, well, I've asked for forgiveness and it's done, and you, you're going to have to overthrow that thing that came after you the first time. You're going to have to get your spirit man to get stronger than that thing that came after you the first time, and this is what Paul is talking about. He said, I had to discipline my body. Why would Paul have to discipline his body if he didn't have any problems? <laughs> Paul had problems. He was a murderer. He was easy for him to kill people. He understood. If he was easy for him to kill people, how many know it was easy for him to talk about people? Okay. <laughs> Paul also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings, how many times? Oh, y'all don't have the scripture up? Often. Often. In cold and nakedness. See, ministry requires that you're going to have some sleepless nights. It's going to get cold. You're going to get weary. And everybody wants to everything to be peachy and rosy. But if you don't have no skin in the game, you're not going anywhere. You have to have skin in the game. You, does everybody know what I mean when I say skin in the game? I'm trying to be politically correct today. Okay, a word was given today. This is what it means: sacrifice. You got If you're gonna come in, you can. Dory was talking about. If you, you know, you gotta sacrifice. Where is your praise? You know, if you don't have no praise, there's no sacrifice. There's no skin in the game. You want God to bless you, but there's no skin in the game. Okay, you got to talk to this body and get this body in subjection to the things of the Lord. You have to have skin in the game. Well, my kids might hate you. Well, that's okay. Your kids going to have to one day get skin in the game too. Is everybody with me today? It's not about us. It's about the king. Are you there? So you got to put your skin in the game. Ask your neighbor, you got skin in the game? Another one of our members had said something to you this morning, which I totally agree. You were born inside of a war. There's a battle that's raging, and the battle that's raging around you is for your soul. It's not for anyone else's. And if he takes your soul, then how can you get someone else back? Dad, let me speak to you today, whether you're here or whether you're not here. If you only knew the power of a godly man. Whether your children are surrogate children, whether your children are um, 
your own bloodline children, your prayers alone will overthrow the work of any enemy. No one can take your children out. Abraham, y'all know about him. He had to go after and rescue Lot. Lot was not his son. Lot was a nephew. But Lot had put himself under the yoke of Abraham as a family patriarch. No matter who we are, I'm speaking to the men right now, you have the ability to enter into a place of fasting and prayer. You, let me tell you why we've come under the yoke of Jesus Christ. Because he fasted and prayed. And no one can pluck us out of his hands. That's what the scripture says. No one can pluck us out. My words are few when I find out that one of my children have done something. My words are few because, and my wife will tell you, I don't want to speak out of my flesh. Because my spirit is stirring inside. My son, I love him. He has his way of coming in to, to me and saying, okay, Dad, where did I go wrong? Because my silence speaks. Are you there? So fathers have this way of talking when they don't talk, particularly when they walk with God. Are you there? It's important that we understand how our prayer can change some things. So let, let me deal with you women. Let me start with the married women first. My Bible says it's your responsibility to love your husband, not murmur against him. And it says that you will win him over by the meek and quiet conversation. In other words, when you walk in truth, he'll come. It will wreak coals of fire on his head when you learn to hold your peace. But you can't get there if your flesh is raised up and you have not fasted and prayed. Go to war. Don't talk to me about no war room. Mm -mm. I mean, I, I understand it. You got your prayer closet. You got your war. But listen, your battle is not in a closet. Your battle is in your heart. And that's where you have to stay. Okay, let me go to your young women. You're not going to like this, but I'm going there anyway. I got a question for you. Who's your father? That's my question for you. Who's your father? Because many of you will rise up and you will go. It ain't going to get it. Everyone needs a dad. What did I just say? Everyone needs a dad. When you allow your dad to put you in a place where you can run, you can run. Your mama... Correction, your godly mother will give you the stamina to keep running. But your dad will guard you as you run. If you have not read the book of Esther, read about Esther. Her husband came because Mordecai, her uncle, put stuff in order. And all the church said amen. That's the scriptures. You got to agree with it. We're running here. We're running there. We're trying to look good. We're trying to do this. We're trying to do that. And my man's going to be get rid of your list. Because what you may think you want is not what you need. Let me tell you something about your dad, young lady. Your dad know men, if he's a real dad. All he needs to do is walk in the house, and he can smell 
whether or not he's a Mustafa or a Scar. <laughs> he knows the difference. He knows. Partially because he's been out there too. But more importantly because he's been given a place of authority in the lives of people that God has given to him. And we take that so lightly. I've seen mothers weep because their child died and there was no dad there to govern things. That is the worst thing that any woman can go through, to lose her child before she has lost her own life. That's a pain that cannot be bare. It hurts, and only God can get you through of that. We have to take responsibility when it comes to prayer and fasting. You can keep the wolves off when you pray and when you fast. It's, it's enough that you're in a war and you're already subject to the enemy's darts. And all the church said. Amen. So the kingdom that God has you in is not a kingdom of the natural and of flesh. Some of you, you're always giving to your children. You're always blessing. I believe in blessing your children. But I believe in you allowing them to grow up too. If you don't teach them how to war, they can never get to the next place. You don't, like, you don't make your kids do any chores. This is not for y'all. This is for television. You don't allow your kids to do any chores. You say, oh, they're not good at that, blah, 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 blah. Well, how are they going to get good at it unless they train at home? Because what happens is they grow up and they marry him or they marry her, and then they want somebody to be a mommy or a daddy to them. And that doesn't work. Cause nothing but headaches. And then we're not even in the war anymore. We've been captured and we're in slavery. It's important that we understand that we have weapons of warfare that are not carnal, but mighty through God. Those weapons that we have are spiritual weapons. Praying and fasting is a spiritual weapon. I need you through your prayer and your fasting to acquaint yourself with the covenant that God gave you. Let me just say what that is. A covenant is a relationship that God has given unto you. It says to you in your relationship that you belong to me and I belong to you. We're bound to each other. So a lot of times we're not going to fall because he's with us. No man may take our life, can't take us out. However, you may not reach the goals that you need to do. How I many you know God does that for you? Um, I was with my granddaughter this past weekend, and yesterday when I was with her, she, <laughs> she got so excited, and she said, Mommy, I ate all my food, and you didn't have to yell at me. <laughs> now, that may not have mean, but I listened to her. She said it twice, and I listened to her. And here's what I, I saw out of that. When you're a good parent, you're not going to allow your kid to get the dessert. You're not going to allow your kid to get up from the table until they finish their food. Are, are y'all there? Mm -hmm. uh, well, Mom, I just don't feel like doing my homework. I got a headache. Well, go ahead, take a rest for half hour. You're going to do that homework when you get done. Did you finish your homework? No. 12 o'clock at night. Wake up. You don't dismiss. Why? Because you're a good parent. And good parents don't let kids do what they want to do. TV off by such and such a time. You know your kids shouldn't be watching TV at a certain time. And you go in the room and the TV's still on. Oh, mom, it puts me to sleep. Okay, fine. We're going to change that. Because you don't need to be moving out of your flesh. You need to be moving out of your spirit. 
unplug it, take it out. <laughs> Let's see how long they stay awake. Are y'all hearing me today? It's important that we understand that we have to govern. Everybody say govern. govern. When God put us in the earth, God put us in the earth to govern. He gave you relationship because he governs. He governs systems. He governs worlds. He does not govern you. He puts you here that he might have relationship with you. When he established the church, which we call the ecclesia, the ecclesia is set there so that we can govern. Everybody say govern. Yep. Govern means you establish laws and principles. When you move by spiritual laws, things change in your life. When you move by natural laws, things stay the same. Amen. Somebody say, I'm going after the spiritual. You know what covenant relationship is. I'm not going to talk about that again. You know that you're supposed to have a father. You're supposed to embrace sonship. You know that you have to walk in submission, a word that most people don't like. But submission is one of the greatest words in all of the earth. Every single Sunday, someone has to come forth and has to encourage you to give and encourage you to tithe. We got to stop that. We have to stop that. When you're in submission, you move the way you're called to move. No one has to tell you how to move. How do you know when a son becomes a son? Because they're submitted. No one has to tell me where I'm supposed to be or what I have to do. I'm there because I'm there. Amen? When you're part of a kingdom, you understand that there's a king, and that means government. The king has rules. The king has established rules, and in those rules, we have to begin to move and walk in them. So Jesus has a kingdom, and in his kingdom, it's called the ecclesia, the one here in the earth. So in the ecclesia, God has established rights and duties. You can tell me what's going on in Washington, D.C., Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm never concerned about who gets to be mayor. I'm never concerned about who gets to be county exec. Here's where my concerns is, is that the kingdom of God continues to run. Because regardless of who gets in office, Jesus is still Lord. Whether his man gets in or don't. Or woman. It doesn't matter. Jesus is Lord. Are you there? That's who we're going to move by. The Lordship of Jesus Christ. Doesn't mean we're going to forsake governance. His laws are higher than anybody else's laws. But we have rights and we have duties. Listen to me because this is very important. As you're going into this time of prayer and fast. Here's the right that you have. Everybody say grace. grace. That's your right. Grace, by definition, is what God has already done for you. Everybody say already. already. That's grace. What God has already done for you. But here's your duty. So that's the right that you're entitled to. That's your entitlement. But here's the duty. You got to walk in faith for it. You can't get there without faith. That's your duty. You have to believe. Now you can't come up here telling us what God said. That that's going to be my husband. And you trying to establish yourself with a man that's already married. That ain't faith. You can't believe what he has not already given in his word. That was an amen moment for you. Should I give it to you again? You can't believe what he has not established in his word. You got to know his word. Your faith rests on his word. His grace is based on his word. Your faith ought to rest on his word. Are y'all with me today? That's the rights and duties of the government that we live in. You can shake it up. You can put any other kind of words on it, anything else you want to do. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're about to go forward, you have to know. Never have the righteous been forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. We don't beg nothing. Why? Because we got rules in our kingdom. And the rules in the kingdom is what allows us to move in the grace of God. Amen? 
Amen. It not only allows us to do that, when we become subject to his rule, how many of you know we move with power and authority? Everybody say, I have power. And I have authority. So the fact that Jesus is the rule and he rules the kingdom, that means he's at a higher level than we are and we are subordinate to him. Would you all agree? If you agree, say amen. amen. Okay. Subordination is a function. It's not a position. Subordination is a function. It's not a position. And I'm going to prove that to you in a minute. You have a trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Which one is greater than the other? They're not. The Father is not greater than the Son. The Son is not greater than the Holy Spirit. But they are subordinate to each other in the sense that whoever is moving in what function, that's who's in charge. God has functions. Jesus has functions. The Holy Spirit has functions. They all share on who's ever moving in that function. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. So the Holy Ghost comes down and he's anointed Jesus. Why? He was in the form of a man. So Jesus is going to follow the Holy Ghost. Are you there? That's called subordination. When you understand the truth of subordination, then you get authority, then you get power. You can't have authority, you can't have power, because it doesn't exist outside of Jesus Christ or the devil. You will have natural earthly power and authority if you run with the devil. But you will have kingdom power and authority if you run with Jesus. Are you with me today? That doesn't happen until you understand subordination, okay? Here's what God said when it came to subordination. You didn't choose me. I chose you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. The cross was not for us. It was for him. He chose us and ordained us that we might become something bigger than what we are. So you want to move in purpose, you want to move in destiny, you can't do it unless you get in him. Some of us have been on the wrong road, and we need to get back on the right road. Amen? When Jesus talks about the ecclesia and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, he's speaking of authority. He set up his church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. Amen? You will never see the Father force submission on the Son. The Son delights in doing what the Father's asked. Those of you who are in submission to others, they should never have to force authority. Let me go here. You have an employer, they're in charge. Unless it's something against kingdom rules, you need to do it. And all the church said. The Holy Spirit will never promote his own agenda. Well, he said it will teach you all things whatsoever Jesus has already said unto you. So he takes the word because Jesus is the word and he teaches you those things. Many of us want to promote our own agenda. As a church, we're not there anymore. Whether you want to be a part, whether you won't, don't want to be a part. If you're a part of something that God has set you in, how many of you know you've got to move in the, with delight? Amen. Amen? Here's a scripture for you. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Well, we hate that. <laughs> for the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. And he's the saver of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let their wives be to their own husbands in everything. 
We don't like that. It doesn't mean that you're under them. It just means that there's a function that they flow in. As long as you get to walk in the word, it's okay. He didn't ask you if your husband was saved. He didn't ask you how holy your husband was. I'm going to go a little bit further. He didn't ask you how holy your pastor was or if he was mature as you are. He said, submit yourself. That's a hard word. I won't go into this in depth, but the role of submission is that you might be given a level of authority that is beyond what you've ever had before. Without proper submission, there can be no authority. You need that level. You need to be able to walk in that in this day. When the body becomes harmonious, it's because we're submitted one to the other. We learn to trust each other's gifts. We learn to trust each other's anointing. One of the things that we decided to do, not that we don't make mistakes, we make a lot of mistakes. But one of the things that we started to do as a church is we started to build the ecclesia the way it's supposed to. If the pastor has to give all the prophetic words, it's not a church. The body has words. If the pastor's got to do all the dancing, it ain't going to work. Okay? The pastor sits where he sits, stands where he stands, because he has a responsibility as well to give back to the Lord. Not to come in and be Lord. The vision belongs to him, but the running belongs to you. I tell you of a time when a Cushite was standing and David said, I wonder what it is of my son Absalom. What's going on? What's, what is it? That was heard on the battlefield by his general Joash. He heard that. And he turned and he looked at a Cushite and he said to him, I need you to run. And I want you to run, and I want you to bring this message to the king. In submission, he ran. The goal was to get where he needed to be and to deliver the message to the king. Another man came along in his own delight and said, let me run. He said, you can run. So he took the low road where the Cushite took the high road. The man who took the low road came in first and said, oh, king, oh, king. We won the battle. Everything's good. We're all right. He said, what of my son Absalom? I don't know, the battle was so thick, I couldn't see what was going on. There's another runner coming, stand aside. The next runner came. Oh, king, long live the king, hail to the king. What of my son Absalom? Oh, king, may thy son be as thy enemies. How many know that soothed the king? He needed a message. But the gentleman who came with the message had authority on him to bring the message because he submitted to the authority that was over him who sent him with the message. Are y'all there? If we're trying to build our own kingdom, you're not going to make it. When you fast. Not if. When. When. It didn't say when, if, it said when. It's not optional. You want to break the yoke in your family? You want to break something off? Maybe he or she can't see you to marry you because there's a veil in the spirit that has hidden you from obtaining that favor. Maybe you can't get that promotion yet because there is an arrogance in you that will allow you to literally destroy someone else's life. But if you fast and you pray, you can change 
the destiny of your life and the destiny of people that God has given to you. Don't give up on what God is giving you. Sacrifice. Everybody say sacrifice. You don't feel like coming to church on Sunday. Not an option. You're commissioned. You're commissioned. You are commissioned. Amen. I've been asked, we need you to come into the office on Sunday. Not a problem, but it won't be until after two. I have to see the king. I don't need to plan anything. No, I need to be with the king. You can tell me anything you want. This is where I belong. This is who I'm supposed to be with. Are you there? There was a day that pastors every five years would move. Between one and five years, they would move. Never see the fruits of their labor. It was all about their popularity. That day is gone. It's about building kingdom. Are you there? There's a unity that is building among the saints that we've not seen before. It's about your gifting coming to the table and you using what you have to begin to build somebody else. You've built you with it, now build somebody else with your gift. When you start putting that out there and building other people, then you'll start seeing an ecclesia become strong. Why has God given you children? So that you can see the potential that you never reached in some places in your kids. And those kids will bring it to a reality. And think about it. One person could have had all of that, but now you got five of you in the family who got all of that. Wow. And then it spreads to your aunts and to your uncles and to your cousins and everybody else that they mingle with. And you get kids you didn't even know you had. The scripture tells us, if you read in the scriptures in the book of Luke, it talks about a woman by the name of Anna who had a husband who died and she was constantly at the temple. But it, why does it tell us that? That says nothing else about her. But when she saw Jesus come as a child into the temple, this woman committed herself as an intercessor for the rest of her life. Who did she intercede for? You never hear anything about her. Who do you think she was interceding for? Jesus. That was her son too. Mary wasn't the only one. She was committed to intercede for him, to keep him before everyone else. Are y'all there? Yeah. Times of prayer and fasting. You want to operate in purpose? You got to put some skin in the game. And God will commission you and take you into a new place. Come on to your feet. If there's somebody here today, perhaps you need special prayer for something, I'm going to ask that you come and come quickly. If you don't know the Lord, I'm going to ask that you come and come quickly. If you want to receive him today, come quickly. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit today, I'm going to ask that you come quickly. 